America. Today, I want to talk about 10 types of reservists in the army. Because even the most high speed soldiers conform to some laid back standards. Let's begin. One. Num num. He's overweight. His chin looks like a sand bath of tapoo. I don't know how he's still in, but he is, and I'm not surprised. Don't be fooled when a reservist tries talking to you about games. He's really talking about num num. Num num wants yum yum. Two, rough net. This guy was in Desert Storm. Yeah, the whole six months. His stories are legendary. He'll tell you shit like, I remember back in my days, we used to be able to roll up our sleeves. Now, according to Army regulation, I gotta have my sleeves fucking rolled down. It's 110 degrees out here. I remember back in my days, we had an NCO gut punch his soldiers. Nowadays, you got NCOs throat punching their soldiers. Now, how the fuck do you expect them to respond if you're throat punching them, idiot? I remember back in my days, I used to be able to smoke in formation. Now, I gotta smoke in the back of the formation so nobody else smells the shit. Sometimes, I can't even smoke at all. Fucking bullshit. Now imagine a formation where the person next to you doesn't care if you're smoking or not. About three quarters of the army? That's a fucking dream come true. Three, jingling, jingling. It's like this guy's never heard of 670-1, right? The most notorious shit that I continue to see were the leather belts and the keys attached to the loophole. Just jingling his way down the hallway, nobody saying nothing. Four, no show Joe. My man never shows up. You see, in the reserves, when you don't show up, you gotta show up another time. This guy just doesn't show up. It's almost like he's not in the unit. Except he is. Except nobody knows him. Except for the people that do. Five, war horse. I briefly mentioned this in my last video. This guy's older than dirt. You can't tell who's older, him or the first son. This guy's so old you can learn about his generation in history class. That's how old this guy is. Six. Regular. Oh yeah, high speed active duty guy coming to the unit. Everything's okay now, right? Wrong. He's lazy as fuck. He's not training, he's looking for a job and he's getting fat. He also thinks the reserve is a joke, so he's not making any initiative to stay productive. Seven. AGR. This is the most hated person in the unit. While everybody out there looking for a job, this guy secured his. Nobody knows what it is he does. You leave for training and he fucks up your packet. And God forbid you gotta get promoted. Hey, comatose. If you take a look behind you, it's always the same guy sleeping. It's like he didn't get enough sleep the past 28 days. I don't know. He's always the guy you gotta get to stand up because he's falling asleep during some high speed PowerPoint training. Nine. Dickhead. This guy's a straight dick. This is the guy everyone's trying to avoid during drill. This is the guy that works at Marshall, comes back micromanaging everyone. This is also the guy that nobody wants to deploy with. And I don't blame him. 10. No shade Dave. You know he just got back from the club because his shit's lined up and he still smells like cologne. The irony about this situation is that nobody's gonna say nothing because they can't keep track on who's on a no shaving profile. And this concludes my 10. You know what? I feel a little dangerous today. 11. Space. You know that guy that just doesn't know what to do after you give him a clear set of instructions? I mean, he rogered up, so I'm gonna assume he had it. Only to find out he spent the entire day doing nothing in the area I wanted him to do the task in. 12. No regrets. Know what I'm saying? Coming from active duty? Well, leaving active duty is gonna be your first regret, I promise you. Nobody ever says thank God for being in the reserves after they come out of active duty. I've never seen that happen. And typically what happens is that you show up on Saturday and on Sunday you turn up missing because you're spending the entire day in confession. Oh Lord, please take me back. I'm so sorry I left. I'm so sorry I left. I don't think I'm gonna survive here. I don't think I'm gonna make it. They're all pogs. Every one of them, they're pogs. I should have joined the National Guard. At least they have infantry. <laughs> 13. TIG. Now, TIG is a big deal in the reserves, and even though you're the same rank as your buddy, from time on in, they're gonna feel the need to remind you that they still outrank you. Hey, now don't forget, I've been this rank for the past 10 years, so technically, I outrank you. Uh. Yeah, that's not something you want to brag about, genius. 14. Nervous Tick. Now there's two variations on this guy. There's the one that always sounds nervous every time he's trying to give his minions a set of instructions. And then there's the other guy that sounds real calm and collective, but when shit don't go his way, just fucking explodes. Let me show you. So, um, um, the platoon sergeant wants us to, uh, inventory our, um, our duffel bags. So, uh, just, um, just let... Let me know if if, uh, if something's missing. You, you're missing a canteen? You a can't. How, double check. Double check if you're missing the canteen. How the how are you missing a canteen? Well, where is it? You have it right here. Where is it? And last but not least, 15. The what if. The what if you would've went active duty. Not gonna lie, I met some soldiers that had great potential. Great potential to be great soldiers. They never took that step forward because they were afraid they weren't gonna be able to make the cut. Tell you one thing, you never know unless you try. That's the only advice I have for you. And this officially concludes my 10.
plus five types of reservists in the army. I'll see you guys next week, and like always, you stay free, America. Nothing, nothing below a 290, or we're doing two a days. You, I swear to God, if you're not running like motors are landing right behind you, I will look for you. I will find you. Drink alcohol of any kind, so don't be the reason why your company's on dry status. You are not gonna like what comes next. Now, people shouldn't be telling you what to do, are gonna tell you what to do, like an E3 or an E4, and nobody gets around more than somebody part of that E4 mob.